For half a year, our gardens look like this, either covered in snow or just bare ground and sticks waiting for growth. But by the beginning of July, they're starting to hit their stride. So now that they're looking pretty good, Mary Pat wants to take you on a tour and show you our gardens. These gardens are Mary Pat's project. She designs them, she plants them, she maintains them, and as a result, she makes a beautiful home for us right here. And she gets to take a lot of great pictures as well. Uh, I just want to be honest, my entire involvement with this is mowing the lawn. And every now and then helping out lifting and toting or, you know, anything that takes more than two hands. Uh, to help her out with but there's there's a lot of work that goes into this but it's a real labor of love and she does just a fantastic job so i really hope that you enjoy the tour and get ready because uh she'll be taking over in just a minute well we'll start here in the front yard and i'll just give you an overall view uh so you can be able to place things in context as mary pat tells you what we've got Okay, and on the side of our driveway, I call this the daylily field. I buy what I like. I don't care if they're field lilies or what they are. If I like them, I buy them, and I plant them. And included in here are also um, the plants that the butterflies like, though we have had very little action this summer. And this is our front yard on the other side. And what we have done are rose bushes, which I call my deterrent gardening. Why? Because there are certain people who will not stay out of my gardens. So if they want to enter, be prepared. Also in the uh, uh, paver round circle, there used to be a different plants in there, but once again, I have switched over to daylilies. And in um, that long garden too, what we have are ground covers. Um, the, uh, well, of course I can't think of the name right now. And then up more uh, perennials. I have ground roses. I have my Stati Humera, which are the tall spikes. And I put a few annuals in there too, just to, just to fill in this space. And at the front door, We have the annual lantana, which butterflies like, and so do hummingbirds. And on the other side of the front door, we have crepe myrtles and uh, deterrent gardening again to keep people out of our house. Let's go through the gate and into the backyard gardens now. Okay, here we are in our backyard, which used to be nothing but green grass. Now it is several gardens surrounding the entire backyard. Coneflowers, daylilies, field lilies, and back further, I have my veggie garden. I also do a lot of bird photography back here because the birds love to come back here 
and get their food. The hummers like to sip their, their nectar. And once again, if I like it, I buy it and I plant it. In front of the garden shed we have, um, unfortunately, tuberous begonias, which took a big hit in some uh, nasty weather that we had. So I have to come up with a plan for those. And again, more Stati Humello, which are the tall spikes and interspersed in this garden are also just different perennials. Okay. Uh, here we have the side of the shed and we have Stelladoro um, lilies which are the small bordering uh, uh, yellow lilies and in the back uh, there's Astabile, you see that pretty feathered plant I also put a tomato plant in there. That's doing okay. And uh, the tree in front is called the dogwood. And then, of course, we go over to the other side and we have another arbor with clematis and climbing roses. And also, you'll see Cleome, which is back here, the, the purplish pink tall flower. That will reseed itself all the time, so if you're not into it and it's got uh, pointed uh, leaves, then you can get yourself poked real good with that one. This is probably the biggest garden that we have in the back, and it forms um, kind of a U shape. The arbor uh, had beautiful pink rose blooms in the spring. It will rebloom later on. And then I have my other uh, rose bushes and uh, I also have delphiniums, crepe myrtles, daylilies, and some ground cover. It's just kind of a, if I like it again, it goes in, I try it. I also have irises in this. So, the butterflies love it when they're around. Birds love it. In fact, we have a nest of baby robins uh, in one of our trees back here. But it's just kind of like um, a very restful garden to look at when we're sitting on the deck and watch the birds and the butterflies. These are some of the roses that I started uh, last year and added a little bit more to them. Um, why did I buy them? Because I was attracted to the color. It was a color that I thought would pop back here in the, the big one, big gardens. We also have our um, crepe myrtles, which produce a beautiful pink. I have ground covered roses. I have regular roses and um, I also have my delphiniums which right now are not in bloom um, but those are really quite pretty early on and they'll rebloom again. Here we have the center garden. This one has undergone several changes but we finally settled on a crab apple tree and I must say the birds absolutely love the crab apples and uh, Axel likes to come in, unfortunately, and lay it on the ground and uh, kind of turn over my daylilies. But um, it's just kind of another garden. If I like it, I put it in and see what happens. Coneflowers, Cleomies. In our backyard, we have Kiwans and cherry trees. They don't produce any cherries. But when we had our house in the borough in Camp Hill, um, we had to replace a tree. So we went to one of our local garden centers. And we both fell in love with Kiwans and cherries because of their shape and of their blooms in the spring. This, 
This one in the, that you're looking at right now is only two years old. There's another cherry tree, but it's called a ruby. And you can see that its leaves are much different. The tree in front of us, that has a nest of baby birds. And it's driving Miss Co Cody crazy because, oh, there's Mama, because Cody being a German short hair pointer, She's a bird dog, and she's like, but there are birds here. This nest, there are four baby robins. The mama doesn't like us coming over here, and she keeps a close, close eye on us. This is the nest that Cody likes to come to as much as possible and point out that there are birds here, Mom, Dad, look, birds. This is the last garden we're going to be showing, and it is my hydrangea garden. Also, I have um, butterfly bushes, which we'll look at. In between all of these, what I plant are uh, sunflowers. Specifically, I like Titonia, which is called the Mexican sunflower. It's not really a sunflower like this yellow one that you'll be looking at. It produces um, red leaves, and it is the one sunflower that monarchs absolutely love. And they will come in big numbers and just sit all over them. And here we have the, one of the butterfly bushes, and aptly named because butterflies are drawn to it. Uh, this one is a tricolor. It does pinks, purples, and um, green. Here we have the crepe myrtle that is um, on the back of our house. And uh, these were all transplanted from the front when after we after we had them out front for a year. This one we absolutely love. It has gotten so big and so beautiful. Over next to the garage door, that is called a passion vine. And that obelisk that it's climbing up was in the back uh, garden before. And of course, being a Gemini, I always change my mind about things, so I took that one out and I put it up here and I thought that would make a pretty pretty space for that. And up up on the deck we have our Hummer feeders, one just left. Michael does a great job of, of uh, videotaping our Hummers that come. So that's probably about it for our garden tour and I hope you enjoyed it.